Uh, since some of you are beginner sweet water color, uh, we will also uh, take a little bit of, I will also give some pointers, basic pointers on watercolor. Uh, in the meantime, I will um, get the link to the image that we're going to use today. And I'm going to put it in the chat. And I think everybody should be able to open it from here. Um, let me know. So first thing first, uh, one second, I need to organize all the windows that I have. Okay. Mm. So this is the image we're going to work with. It's in portrait. Um, two basic things about watercolor, especially for the absolute beginners. So watercolor is a transparent medium. This means that you can't use lighter colors to cover darker colors. Uh, don't worry, este, Esteban Garvier, don't worry, we just started, even if you arrived now. Um, so I was saying watercolor is transparent color. You can't use lighter color to cover darker color. Um, that means that when you work, you want to work from the lightest shades to the darkest shades. So you want to follow this order of managing your tonal values with the watercolor. Uh, the technique that I'm going to share with you today, uh, since there are many people who are uh, doing figure or figuring watercolor for the first time, I'm going to try to pack in some tips, tricks, things that are useful also for managing uh, figure drawing in general. So we're going to try to build up our expressive watercolor of figure uh, in a way that um, will allow us also, for those who are not familiar with drawing figure, it will help you navigate the situation a little bit. Uh, so we're going to use watercolors. I wanted to use a smaller uh, box, but sadly, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find it. I, I probably used it uh, for, the, um, for all the travel sketching we did. And yeah, now it's somewhere in a mysterious place or something. Um, the colors are not going to be fundamental. This is the important thing. So everybody, we're not going to worry too much about color mixing. Right now, we're going to concentrate on rendering the tonal values and the shadows and the general dynamism of the thing that we want to draw. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest for you to keep handy, uh, depending on how hot is where you are, uh, I will dry up between layers with the hair dryer. Uh, if you have a hair dryer, maybe for you, because in between the demo, I will stop after each step. Uh, I don't think you need the Dropbox. You should be able to open from that link. But what I'm going to try to do, because last time I put it in the chat, but not everybody could open it from the chat. So I'm going to do both things anyway. So I'm going to put the reference picture in the chat to as a file um, on top of the Dropbox link, which should be a public link. But if you're struggling, I need to, where is the picture that I want to do? <laughs> Find it in my folder. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, this is weird. Did I make it? I should. One second. I, I, I think I am feeling like I'm crazy because I am looking inside the folder and I can't find it. Where is it? Ah, oh, here. Okay. There. So. Um, okay. So. There. So you both have. I'm also going to repost 
the Dropbox link for the latecomers. So you have either the file or the Dropbox link. You should be able to access it. Uh, if not, we can also do this thing. I'm gonna go in share screen from like one second and you can screenshot it. That's also a solution. If not ready, three, two, one. Okay, so well, we have all the options now, but I lost the chat. Where is the chat window? The struggle, the struggle people here, the struggle. Okay, so we were saying, uh, we're not gonna care about colors. We're gonna care mainly about tonal values. So I'm not gonna say I'm using this color or that color. Uh, I'm just gonna address how much pigment I put because that is going to be the relevant thing. Now, uh, one of the ways that I like to start uh, when I do figuring watercolor, uh, the watercolors that you may have seen, I don't know exactly which one they used in the promotion, but usually those watercolors are 50 per 70 in size, so quite big. Um, and because of the space, some of these techniques that now I'm doing on a, what is this, 20 per 30, uh, some of these techniques are easier on bigger paper, but I'm gonna try my best to show them on the small one too. So usually the first thing that I do is take a light tone. So in this case, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use the dirt of the palette. This is the secret to natural muted colors make the colors with the dirt of the palette. Um, I'm gonna get a piece of paper to test the colors. So the first color that I'm gonna use, it's like a very light wash of leftover yellow with leftover purple. And the idea is with this wash, you want to load your brush well, and then try to paint the dynamic lines of the figures, kind of like a stickman of the figure, but with the flat of your brush. So like, this is the leg, and then this is where the arm is, this is where the head is, this is the second arm. Doesn't have to be precise, it's just a dynamic sketch. And then here, this is the waist that gets kind of, oof. I probably have to go higher to fit the legs. Yes. And yeah, like this. And then you have the legs there. Yeah. And the waist will have to be a little bit more here. So this is just to sketch the general shape of the whole thing. And then if you want, you can also sketch, there is this sphere which I find extremely cool uh, that is going on there. So it's like sketching dynamic lines, okay? Not too much detail, not imprecise. This is your step one. So I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this. In the meantime, I'm gonna draw. Ooh, I need to go get my my hair dryer. Coming back. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Okay, so ready for the next step? Everything okay? Yeah? Okay, good. So. One second. Okay. So second step. One of the things that I always suggest people when they have to start uh, organizing figure on the page, uh, one of the best things you can use is the negative space because the negative space gives you uh, a perception of proportions and where things are, but you're not focusing on the subject. You're focusing on everything else, on the background. And usually the shapes that the background creates are abstract geometric shapes. And that means that they are easier to understand and recognize than a human body that has a lot of more complicated parts. And when we draw something uh, that is complicated, our brain tends to shortcut and simplify it using a uh, symbolic graphic representation that are not very connected to the thing. But if you're drawing an abstract shape, geometric shape, a triangle is a triangle. My brain can't really play it around that much. Uh, so what I suggest is uh, you make, um, again, a medium wash color. I'm gonna, this red, it's a little bit too aggressive. Let's put a little bit of green so it becomes more brownish and muted. Okay, again, by the big law of recycle. And I'm gonna do this like so a darker shade than before, but not that darker. These colors are different. You can use any color you want. It's okay. This is just the background. Our background shouldn't be too dark, it needs to be quite light still. 
And what I'm gonna do again with the flat of my brush, uh, keeping it parallel to the page, I'm gonna try to focus, and let's start from the bottom because it's where it's tweakier. Um, I'm gonna start here and just fill in the generic space around the figure. You don't have to worry if it's not precise. We are, you don't have to do the precise contour. Focus on the generic shapes. Like here, there is this kind of U shape, which is the part of the sphere there. And then on the other side of the figure, the part of the sphere that I see, it's kind of like a squarish part like this. And then I have, here I have these two triangles, the one between the arm and the figure, and then the second triangle, which is the one between the arm and the leg. And then here behind I have the, the triangle on the background here, like this. And then on the other side, then I have flat, and then I have another triangle in the background here that goes yeah kind of like this okay and then yeah we can fill in the background uh, oh, like this so very generic empty space negative space situation not too much detail okay so this is your step two again i'll leave you five minutes to get around it if you have questions or doubts, you can uh, you can write it in the chat. And when you're done, just uh, when you're done with this step, just quickly lift it up to the camera so I can have a look at how it's going. So do it and then show it to me. Color of the background, it's a slightly darker wash than the first one. It can be any color you want. I literally mixed some leftover colors on the palette into a neutral brownish color. Nothing fancy, okay? And let me dry it up. Okay. Okay, Jojo. Jojo, is that watercolor paper? Yes, okay, because it looked like a sketch pad and I was worrying that after three layers it would have. Is, is it officially watercolor paper? Yes, okay, that's an important thing. Okay, Okay. Okay, Jen. Very delicate. Okay. Yeah. It it doesn't have to be too dark. Like as long as you can see it. Okay, Sarah. That looks good. As long as you can see it, that's enough. Okay, Kevin. Okay, Kristin. Okay. Don't worry about the figures inside now. Okay, Christine. Hello, welcome. Okay, hi, Hida. Hida, yeah. Hida, is that correct? Oh, say it again. Again? Hivda. Hivda. Okay, so the, the W, it's uh, not silent. Okay, good. Hivda. Nice. And okay, Jacqueline. Okay, Numa. Yeah. Good job, people. 
Okay, Rox. Okay, Hanna. Is there somebody on page two? Oh yeah, Malena, hi there. You were the, you are the only one, only screen in page two, sorry. Uh, okay, good job. Uh, okay, Damaris. But Damaris, are you the Damaris I know or a Damaris with a similar name? Who knows? Similar name. <laughs> okay, I, I have um, um, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu friend that is named Damaris. So <laughs> nice. So she would be really gentle because Damaris means gentle. Oh my God. That's it's gentle or calf, like a baby cow. <laughs> Because the the sport that we do means the name of the martial art means the gentle art, and <laughs> that's brilliant. oh my god, are you from? Okay, actually, it means gentle. Yes, in Greek. Ah, in Greek. Yes. Ah, because she's Mexican. I don't know if you're. It is. It's a name. It's a name in the Bible in the Old Testament. Ah. Oh, I'm learning so much. Thank you, Damaris. <laughs> All these informations and <laughs> and good job with the sketch that's a, a good point okay people let's go to the next step now okay for this stage you need something to draw uh ideally you can use a normal pencil if you have a like kind of like this like watercolor pencils pick a color so it will melt a little bit with the water it's pretty if you have those kind uh like if you don't have watercolor pencil but you have like chalk pastel pencils those are water soluble too you can use one of those uh if you have charcoal you can use charcoal uh or you can use use a uh, like normal graphite pencil and try to be light so it doesn't become too dark but yeah any of these things if you have something water soluble and light like not super black in colors or gray or some color it's better but it's okay like any of these things even if you have like chalks or pastels you can use that too again we're not gonna do contour drawing in a precise way we're going to do a little bit of structural drawing just to organize the figure in the space okay so what we're going to do here is i'm not going to try to draw these figures by drawing the person i'm going to draw the volumes and the generic shapes so i'm going to start from here because the most clear shape that I can see it's here from the line of the shoulders of this body then I can go to the side and then I already have this triangle of the second arm and then here there is the leg and then here as you can see like not everything needs to fit the the thing you draw before it's okay if it goes uh over okay it doesn't have to be exactly inside the negative space we drew before it's it, that's why we use the light color it's okay if we go a little bit over and then here we have the second arm again i'm not drawing contours i'm just drawing geometric uh volumes and then we have the head and this head is basically fully covered in hair and then we have the second head here with the jawline and again the line of the shoulder and then i can draw a line in the middle of the body that also helps and then this line where the waistline is, belly button there, then the hips, and then the legs. Are they gonna fit? I don't know. Maybe the foot is gonna end up outside and we will all cry silently together. Or maybe I can manage. It's always an adventure. Who knows if it's gonna fit? Okay, here. It's 
fitting. It's fitting. Oh my God. <sighs> Emotion. We managed to feed the food. Achievement. They made. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't, um, I didn't draw the contours. I just draw these very geometric shapes that connect the different parts. Kind of like, again, variations of stickmans, mannequins, something like this. So I'm gonna leave you for this step, I'm gonna leave you seven minutes until uh, 6.50. So take your time, again, try to use something that when you go with the water is gonna melt a little, but if you just have a pencil, try to stay light. If you're struggling, with staying light, go with the pencil, and before going again with the watercolor, you can use the kneaded eraser to tap it down and tone down the lines so they're not too strong. Remember, you're not drawing the contours. You're not drawing the details. You're just drawing the geometric shapes of the things. No contour lines now, okay? I know it's tempting, but no.
Okay, so are we ready for the next step? Hmm? Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna um, work on the figures and we're gonna, but we're not gonna, again, we're not gonna draw the figure using the contours. We're gonna work on the figure using the shape of the shadows, okay? So we have enough visual information right now to be able to start placing the shapes of the shadows. The important thing is at this point, we're gonna start using the brush not flat anymore because we're not filling the big areas. We're using the brush perpendicular to the page so we can use the tip to do the small things. And we are going to make a color that is slightly darker than these two. And I am going again to make this color mixing whatever random leftover I have in my palette. So basically this workshop for me is an excuse to clean up my palette and make this random, this, this very dark colors, muted colors. But this is probably not dark enough at this point. We'll see. When I say dark, it's not only the tone, the chroma, like the color, because you could say, okay, this is darker, but if I take like, what is the tonal value of this? And one way you can always check the tonal value of what you're doing is by taking a black and white picture. So if you look, see, it is slightly darker maybe enough, but the part that is dry here, it's almost the same color. So I'm gonna, just to be sure, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of color to that. And maybe I would like a purple. Do I have a purple here? I used to have a purple. Is this purple? Yeah, this purple. When I want to make a color darker in watercolor, because the color is transparent, to make a color darker, I keep the same amount of water and I just mix more pigment to it. That will make the color darker, okay? And I wanted to show you again with the, see? Oh, here. See, now it is darker because there is more pigment in the same amount of water. So one of the things that is tricky when you work with watercolor is navigating this thing where between the chromatic value and the tonal value of color. So this color is brown and our brain would be like, oh, this is clearly darker than this. But from a tonal value point of view, it wasn't. So now I have a color that, a color that is darker enough. And with this color, I'm going to go and I'm gonna start from the foot here. And you can squinch with your eyes at the image to kind of put it out of focus and see the shadows more. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along the reference of my structural drawing and I'm just gonna paint the shadows of the figure, the shape of the shadows. And the more you are accurate in the shape of the shadows and the easier it will be and more readable the image will be. So here I have the side of the arm and then here I have the small triangle going along with the rest of the arm this and then here the inside it's like this kind of rounded I can't see your table anymore oh, you uh, I can't see you either yeah 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 it's the um, battery of the phone that is dying let me plug it again sorry uh, 
Okay, should be online. Let me double check after it's connected. It's not. Okay, now it's. We're oh no. Okay, now we're back online. So we were saying we're doing the shapes of the shadows. So let's try to be accurate and precise in that. And then from here, from this arm, I have the shadow of the shoulder of the other arm coming up. It's like composing a puzzle in a way, which is something that I kind of like. If you look at the shapes without thinking what you are drawing, but just observing the shadows as an abstract entity that you are interacting with, that actually makes it like easier to, to navigate, to understand. And then here, I have the, this is where the foot is, then I have the shadow of the second arm coming down here, sort of, more or less. And then I can do some shading where the fingers are. And then from here, let me go more on the side and I can do the shadow here on the side of the body. And like connected to what I was saying before, it doesn't matter if we go on the background that we painted before, okay? Then the shadow of the breast. And one thing it's important to keep in mind uh, when painting um, breast is that usually the shadows are triangular, like um, slices of cake. And then here I have the shadow under the jawline, like this. And again, I'm not drawing any contour at this point, as you can see. And then from here, I'm gonna go down and there is the shadow here on the side. And then the belly button here. Then on the side of the leg, the thigh, I have this big shadow here. And then this second leg, which is in foreshortening and behind the other leg, it's almost all dark and I can barely see the foot. And then I have the other leg here and I have this shadow in the middle part and then the shadow going around where the uh, knee is and a little bit of shadow here on the other side too. And then here. And then we go on this side. So now here we have this, the ear and then the air. And I'm gonna pull the air. The air, Hair is not a shadow per se, but it's a dark mass. So I'm going to treat it like a shadow. And there is a little bit of hair that peaks here too, to be fair, like this. And then the other arm. And then the hand. like this. And now what I can do with the same color, just so this figure don't float into space, uh, I'm gonna go and do the shadow of the, um, of the sphere. And I'm gonna go back to a more flat hold of the brush. So I can just feel bigger areas. One of the important rules of watercolor is that you don't want to go back and forth in the same spot twice. 
because that will um, ruins the paper. So once you put the color, you leave it be. And then maybe after you, when it's dry, you can go back to touch it, but mainly you just, you want to leave it be. Then this side, it's all in the light. And then there is here, the bottom part. And this is also a good chance to reset a little bit of the negative space. And I'm using, as you can see, the flat of the brush like this. And then here. I was thinking, yeah, let's do this for now and then we will do the next step. Okay, 10 minutes to do this too, so you can take your time. And after you're done with this, you can again raise it up and show it to me with this at the end of this step. Oh, okay. Somebody's appearing. Sara, good. Good tonal values. Jojo, very good. Very good job. Perfect point. 
Was it dry before you went there? Okay. And Numa. Okay. Ah, you did the sphere of a different color. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Put it back. Have a bit, bit, back, back. Okay. Yeah, probably you will have to go slightly darker with the sphere. Here, you left the co light color. Go with the dark red that you use for the sphere. Here, on this side of the leg, Numa. There, where you left yellow, go with the dark color of the sphere up to the leg. With the dark red, yeah. No, here, yeah, here, on this side. And Malena, let's see. Okay, very good. And uh, Rox. Nice, good job, Rox. Perfect. Very contrasted. And then, oh, Silke. Okay. Silke, remember when we do the darker layer later to leave a little bit of light here on the sphere, because if not, it becomes flat. Okay, Jen. Okay, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, remember to dry up between, between each step because it's easier to make the color stick. It's nice when it blends, but sometimes you need it to be dry to be precise in the details. And Kirsten, lovely. Okay. I, I love how the line of yellow that you did before makes it look like the god effect. You know the the god the god effect in the in the clouds, like ah, the light that comes from above. Okay, Damaris, very good. Okay, Hannah, lovely. Very good job, people. And you said like, okay, very good, Teresa. Okay, Numa, and then anybody else? Christine, you showed me, yeah. Okay. Okay, Ilda, very nice. Okay, Christine, mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave you a couple of minutes more because I see that some people are still painting, so Take your time and at yeah in two minutes we're gonna start with the next step. And in the meantime, I'm gonna dry up mine, so we're gonna be sure that it's done. Okay. All the other peoples in the other pages that I don't see, is it going okay? You can write in the chat or you can use the the reaction functions. Are you alive? Is everything okay? Are you managing? Yeah, okay. I worry about you. Okay, thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yay, all the thumbs up. Nice. Okay, good job, people. Okay. Do we feel ready to go to the next step? Morally, psychologically, emotionally ready? Okay. So imagine that what we're doing, it's kind of like sculpting. You know, we're starting from the very vague and trying to get to the shaped by sgrossare, by drafting it out on paper. I don't know what is the word by roughing it out. Um, okay, 
So now we need a slightly darker color. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do this color, like I'm gonna try to pull all the leftovers in the same, again, principle of recycle. We try to recycle as much as we can. Okay, there. And to make it slightly darker, I guess I'm gonna put uh, more purple, more purple, come on, more purple. I am absolutely partial to purple colors. I'm gonna put it here and mm, what do you think? Is this darker than the rest? Eh, not really, maybe. Let's check again with our magical trick. Black and white. Beep, beep, beep. Well, it's the same one as before. Okay, so to make it darker, I'm gonna put some red in it. Red is one of the colors that because of the quality of the pigment, uh, tends to become dark, make color darker quite fast. This is not bad. Let's see. Okay, it is darker. And I have to consider that I'm gonna layer it on the rest. And since it's transparent, it's gonna become darker also because of the other colors. It's a little bit too bright for my taste. So I'm just gonna drop a tiny bit of green in it to make it less i don't like saturated colors people it's it's something that pe my students made a ready piece with it okay so with this color i'm gonna do the darker shadows and the background okay so the first thing i'm gonna do is the smaller darker shadows so i'm gonna start from here the important thing at this point is stepping back. I should not cover every, like if I did something with the other color before, when I go with this one, I need to step back and occupy less space. If I cover everything I did before with this color, I'm not showing all the tonal values. So the super important thing at this stage is that I step back. So I don't let the um, the previous uh, I don't let this wash cover completely the previous wash. Okay, so this is the most important thing to keep in mind. And then I'm gonna work on shaping things as best I can. As a blah, blah, blah. sorry language the best way possible. Let's see. And again, I'm not drawing the contours, I'm drawing the shadows. So here there is a thin shadow going across the outline. And then I'm gonna end here, for example, this is not the contour line of the body. This is actually the place where the darker hair are poking out of the figure and that gives me a reference. And then here I have the smaller shadow of the breast. So again, I'm not covering everything that I did before, remember that. And then I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna focus on doing the, the very dark shadows. So the, the parts that really look almost as it's black in the picture. So it's what we will call my shadow point. So I'm gonna focus on that, which means that for some example, at the bottom of the neck, I'm not gonna do anything there, like on the jaw, sorry. There is no dark point there, but there is one here. See, there is the line where the arm touches the other arm and then there is this fold, again, not a contour. And then here, it's slightly darker towards the inside. Again, I'm not covering everything I did before. If I do that, I lose volume, I lose readability of the shape. 
And then here in the hair, you can see that it's darker from the edges going in, but it's not dark all over. So from the darker parts of the hair, you want to brush forward towards the lightest. So here I'm going to brush forward upwards towards the lightest part of the head, which is this part. And then here again, I'm going to go down. Remember to keep the brush perpendicular to the page. So we can have to the paper, so we can have a smooth, thinner line. And then here I have the other hand. And I'm not drawing the fingers, I'm just drawing the shadows between the fingers. That also helps. And then going down on the rest of the body, slightly darker cubic hair the line in between the two legs, small shadow over and under the knee, shadow going around the knee, this small triangular shadow here, and then the line of the leg behind, shadow at the bottom of the knee there, and then this shadow on the rest of the leg. And then on this other leg, again, slight shadow under the toes, and that's it. And then with this color, first thing that I'm gonna do is, I think for the background, I will have to mix more because it's almost over. Uh, so with this one, I'm gonna go slightly at the bottom of the sphere. So on the sphere too, we want to step back. So here, I'm gonna go with the dark, and cut out again my the edge of my leg here and up to the tie. So a lot of times you will use the background oops, to pull the but I'm stepping back still. And then here there is a shadow that I should reinforce like this. And maybe, hmm. I think it's okay. I can maybe put a slightly darker shade. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna regret this shadow. We'll see. Maybe not. And then on the other side, slightly here at the bottom too. Slightly darker shadow. And again, I'm stopping before I get to the edge of the shadow that I did before. And now, let's see if this leftover color is going to be enough. Who knows? Well, I'll try to make it enough. And now I'm going to start from the figure here and do the background. Again, flat brush and then pulling the color outwards. So this is also the practical aspect of doing the background later is that you can work, you can shape it. Your contours are the contrast basically. Then again, from the other side. And this is also the point that if you if you want to fix some elements, you can. Remember not to rub the brush back and forth on the paper. Remember that you can cut in some part of the background color, even if it's already background color because it's a light tone in theory. And then here the corner of the foot. Ah, 
okay decent enough makes sense to me okay the important thing is the contrast between this color and the one we did before it needs to be darker you need to be able to see the difference okay so that's the the important thing you need to be able to see the difference between each of the tonal values you're working with regardless of the colors leaving you 10 minutes to do this. I just spilled the tea on me. Mm. Maybe I could also. I forgot the the line here of the floor. So these people don't float in the air. Mm, something like this. Mm.
Okay, you have five more minutes to work on it. And uh, since this is the last step, what we're gonna do now, we have two things coming now. Uh, one is the usually what I do um, after at the end of the demo, I do a round of feedback, like when I talk with people. Um, and we, I would, so for the people that want, they can raise their hands using the raise hand function in the buttons below in the react, I think it's in the reactions. Yes, under reactions, you can click raise hand. Uh, and if you want, you can give, uh, we can have the verbal feedback uh, exchange. So you can tell me one thing that it made sense that it worked, that you understood, that you can bring in your practice. And then one thing that you didn't understand, you struggled with, you realize you will do different next time. And, um, and before we do that, uh, in like, we're starting three minutes. So I'm gonna finish up giving you the 10 minutes to finish the work. Um, or before or after. At one point, I would also like to do a group picture with the works of everybody before we say goodbye. Um, and yeah, and don't worry, uh, the, um, uh, the, the feedback uh, part is not uh, gonna be in the recording. So even if you show your face and your drawing, it's not gonna be there. Bye people that are watching the recording. We're gonna do a round of feedback now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, who wants to start? Raise your hand, physically or virtually, like either wave to the camera or use the reaction. Okay, you did. Unmute yourself, dear. Yeah. So, can you see it? Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, it was, um, I think for me, the most difficult thing is that not um, each color looks the same. So it, it's a bit like, um, and it's really, I, I think it, it's really difficult to see when, when the, the color, when it dries, then it's so often so pale. And um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm so, and then I think, um, how can I, how can I just um, fix something in the step before? So especially for me in the, uh, in the, in the leg lying there on the, on the wall or whatever it is, I just, I, I didn't like it. And I would really like to, yeah, to go back for one step or two steps, but I didn't. Yeah, I, I was too shy doing it. Okay, the thing with this watercolor technique and approach, um, you, you can't, like you can't go back one step because the thing is there are techniques to wash watercolor and to, um, how to say, uh, to take off some pigment and then put pigment again on paper, but doing so uh, breaks the freshness of the color on paper. You can see that it's reworked and it yeah. loses that uh, the visual impact that this kind of watercolor has. Imagine like, again, I often use this example, but imagine like, uh, a traditional uh, Eastern Asian calligraphy, and and then you can see the pencil that corrects the shape of a stroke in a character, and it's like what? Was <laughs> <laughs> to do it just on the first try. Uh, but watercolor is a cheap and fast technique when done this way. So sadly, the answer is you do another one. Yeah. Uh, the with watercolor, what I always suggest is approach it like this kind of watercolor that is like four washes, one for tonal value, and you're done. 
uh, approach it as calligraphy. So you do it, it doesn't work. Again, do it again. Don't, don't get pressures about it. It's not mm -hmm. a painting, you know? It, it's not something that you, you're supposed to rework or you're supposed to go into crazy details. It is a process of learning, of being efficient, with as little as possible. So just no corrections, just go again for it. Okay. And um, ah, if there are people, I see that some people are running away already. Before you run away, please leave in the, if you don't want to share with me, but please leave in the chat uh, where you found about the class, uh, so the Berlin Drawing Room can use the information to uh, organize better the communication for the next workshops. And uh, I'm going to leave you also my informations of where you can find me on Instagram and etc. And uh, yeah, the, the standard goodbye thing. Uh, okay, ha, oh, somebody raises their hand. So, Sara. Thank you, uh, Judith. Go, Sara. Hi. This is, yeah, I really appreciated the, um, the blocking of the body that you did first. I have never done that before. I think that part of the problem with my painting was, um, as you can see, I'm using a very small piece of paper. Right, because you know, so I I lost a lot of detail in the hands and the feet, but I'm gonna try this again. As you say, don't be precious about it. Try it again, just using a larger sheet of paper, and I think that will help me with the um actual blocking out of the shadows. Yeah. Yes, I feel that this technique, especially the way I use the brush, it is easier on bigger paper because you can really express the dynamism of the strokes and, and right. all those. So yeah, absolutely. And you know, I don't have much detail in my feet and hands either. You know, it's just the basic shadows. Yeah, uh, an unfortunate thumb amputation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's in a, like, you know, you saw me, I was like, is the foot gonna fit or not? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, Mary, I would have like Mary, the image that we drew, uh, I put the image, if you, I don't know when you joined, but I put the file in the chat and also Dropbox links to download it. And then I showed the image if somebody could not download or open Dropbox to screenshot it. But in theory, uh, I can put the image. Let's see if I can find it again quickly. The image that we used. Yeah. I'm going to put the file again in the chat. Maybe you arrived after I had put the file in the chat so you could not see it in. The... Yeah, I, I didn't get here till almost six o'clock, unfortunately. But uh, I joined okay. in <laughs> as much okay. as I could. I'm sorry, I, I mismanaged the time. No, it's okay, don't worry. Uh, they're probably they're gonna put the recording on YouTube after, so you can oh, great. watch the, the beginning there. Thank you, thanks. Uh, then, let's see who has their, uh, wait, okay. Damaris, I see that you're raising your drawing, but I have a line of people with their hands raised, so I'm gonna wait, like, I'm gonna keep in mind that you're there, or maybe I can raise your hand for you. No. Oh, you're a man. Good job, Damaris. Okay, then, Kirsten, let's go. Let's see, let's see. I want to see what you've done. So, one thing that it worked, one thing that you will do different. Um, so, I really also like the starting with the blocking part because I tend to get lost in details. So, that stop me from getting lost in details and I really like that. Um, 
I think next time I would use different shades for the lighter and the darker shadow because they're even though they are lighter and darker, but they're too similar. So I would like to like add like a little bit of dash of another color as well. A little bit more contrast or yeah, exactly. a different uh, undertone of the color, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Yeah. But from what I can see, I, I, the shadows on the legs, you've been very accurate on the shapes mm -hmm. of the shadow and it's very well readable. So kudos. Even if the rest, the background, it's very yeah. muted yeah. and not contrasted, but there yeah. in, in the legs, I, I really like the shadows of your legs. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Kirsten. And, and thank you for the class. <laughs> thank you for participating. I'm happy that we, we reconnected after all this time. Exactly. And bye, Laura. And wait, I want to see your, where are you, Laura? You're leaving without showing me what you've done. Uh, post it somewhere, if you can hear me. Okay, bye, Kirsten. And uh, Jen. Hi, um, it's a bit messy. I got the top part here a little bit confused. And yeah, I don't, don't think I got my shading quite right. And uh, similar to Kirsten, uh, yeah, the colours. A bit more contrast. Right. Yeah. Uh, but normal with watercolour. Uh, like what I always say, in watercolour, there are two kinds of people. Those who struggle to do light colours and those who struggle to do dark colours. Yeah. And then only we all meet in the middle and we balance the two tendencies but there is this thing like I've seen it in 20 years of teaching I've seen that there are students that tend to stay always light and students that tend to go too dark so try to find slowly more courage in your washes put a little bit more color and you will get the contrast um, and uh, this part it is tricky and it's one of those parts yeah. that i feel that it's easier to figure out what's going on if you don't think about what you're painting because yeah. if you're if you're trying to understand rationally oh how is this head rotated and how is this jaw rotated you're gonna get stuck because it's a very complicated foreshortening mm -hmm. but if you look at it just like oh like in triangular shadow and then kind of squiggly shadow and then smaller shadow. If you yeah. abstract it, then you can pay me yeah. somehow. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jen. And then Hilda. Um, yes. Uh, can you see it well? Oh, maybe the light. Oh. No, no, no. It's better without the direct light. Okay. Because not it's too burning. Perfect. Well, then I think um, I'm also a little struggling uh, with the details and uh, the contrasts. And uh, aside from that, uh, I also have uh, can't really draw hands that well, especially with watercolors. Um, and yes, and also I just wanted to say thank you for making this class. So I was really happy to participate and. I looked at the clock and I and realized it's only one and a half hour past. So I was really surprised. I'm very happy that I managed to allow you to spend a relaxed and thoughtless hour and a half. We, we need these kind of uh, times where we're just present with what we're doing, especially, you know, in these past years it's a good way to lower cortisol and lower the stress. Just, you know, focus on something relaxing for an hour and a half. And I'm yeah. very happy that I managed to do that for you, Ida. Very happy. Um, and by Isabel, uh, I saw that you arrived late, but yes, it would be on YouTube. And then Merle. Hi, first of all, thank you so much for this workshop. Um, well, I'm just gonna. 
So uh, one thing that I would definitely do differently is the blocking, like the first blocking. I know my foot didn't fit on the paper, as you can see. And um, I find it very difficult to, when you really like roughly block in the forms to remember uh, how the proportions are. Mm -hmm. And um, what I thought was really good is that uh, also when we did the uh, line drawing afterwards, uh, that you reminded us to don't do the contours because I tend to do that. So it was good to really focus on just looking at the shadows and the forms and everything that was connected with this. And yeah. um, one question I have, I put uh, the lines in with a pastel pencil. Uh huh. Can I still erase them when the thing is dry? No. Uh, you can. I don't know because I also use the pastel pencil. I will answer you with a technical test. <laughs> is those lines ideally like this construction line? I, I am a person that loves visible construction lines. So in theory, in this uh style technique whatever it doesn't matter but if you go with a kneaded eraser you can mm -hmm. tone it down a little bit maybe but erase it erase it as if you can't see it not okay. really good uh, especially because if the moment you go even with a light wash of color um watercolor uh one of the ingredients of things that make watercolor is uh arabic gum which is a slightly um it makes like a slight layer over the the pencil so the moment i i so you can get the pencil away from where you have nothing over it but like in these parts i have color over it so if i want yeah. to er the pencil i will erase the color first okay that makes sense. so that's why i always suggest using a light color or something that you know even if it's there after it's okay you know right sorry thank you thank you i'm happy that you enjoy it and aishani unmute yourself let's see yes um so I think this has to be one of my most colorful drawings I've done in watercolor. Uh -huh. uh, after, after hearing what you had said about clearing your palette, I decided to do the same and I ended up using all my colors. So it ended up looking very colorful. Um, something I would try to uh, do a little bit different would be some of the blocking because some of the colors uh, I think it looked, uh, I think some of the colors got a little mixed because of the water. So I'll be careful uh, with that as well next time. But I really like the entire process, especially the color blocking part. That's one of my favorite techniques of coloring. So it was quite fun. Okay. I love it. I, I actually, I really like your, like you chose bright colors, but the colors you chose are complementary. So they kind of look very well together it's a nice color combination so it's okay <laughs> very i'm very happy that you're here aishani and i hope to thank see you. you keep seeing you in the next classes i'll keep thank on you. Thank you. <laughs> okay and uh, numa hey um kind of nervous sharing my drawing but this so can you hear me yes perfect hey uh yeah so i learned a lot it was an amazing experience um and this is like my first figurative water color drawing i learned mixing and um uh, like all the instructions that you just um did with the watercolor and all it was amazing what i struggled most and would like to uh, make it better is like actually putting form to it um you know you just mentioned i'll just show you this um and i want to ask you like i was following this image so like 
it was hard for me to contour or shape with the watercolor mm. on the neck like here so mm. now I like you were you explained earlier as well so now I have a better idea like how to contour a neck um and then like small details like following like triangles and like shape of the surrounding body mm. so I think I would put that like next time if I'll do it so I'll make sure that I'm actually trying to follow yeah one thing you can do this is like uh, because this we did basically everything with watercolor except the structure if you're struggling with doing the small detail the small uh, shadow points with watercolor mm -hmm you can do it with a dark pencil like you can take a pencil and use a pencil to do these okay. tiny ones you know the tiny folds if your brush control is still not there and you're stressing out a lot just grab another thing or, or even a pen or a marker like you can mix media this and, mm -hmm. and with these uh, other colors okay like other mediums Try always to find what is the solution that works best in your right. current when in the space in the point where you are in that moment. Like mm -hmm. that moment, trying to do these small things with the brush, it's not coming. Deep breath, do it with a marker, do it with a pencil, do it with a pastel, and then with time you will get the brush control to do even these small things but yeah. i don't don't torture yourself over it that's what i mean like nobody's I, gonna you and like scold you <laughs> if you use a different thing <laughs> with all uh, for watercolor before um watercolor i always use mixed media but today i was like i think it's only watercolor so i better stick to watercolor <laughs> and i appreciate you trying to do everything with watercolor thank yeah you. but thank you so much it was really nice and amazing i love the energy i love everyone participating and especially your interaction with uh, the class is really amazing like you take out time to see the work of everyone who's doing uh, the drawing it's amazing thank you and i like teaching it's it's lame as that i actually like teaching a lot so it's not it's not a like i do it really out of personal pleasure to you know i'm really curious to see what you're doing and i'm happy to help you so yeah i mean it reflects in your instructions as well that you are interested so it's amazing i mean i cannot imagine i have done this it's not perfect but i'm really proud and like i'm accepting what i have done so it's amazing yeah. and you said it's the first time you do something like this so it's important yeah to you know you understood the process now you can try to do it again and get better with practice which is okay. you know the best goal okay thank, thank you, you so bye everyone and then damaris are you there yes yeah, sure. yeah. yeah i i just want to say that i appreciate the fact that you said put the brush perpendicular use it flat um and and that you explained why you're using different shades of the color and why do you need to use the different tones because it's it's the class then it's not a paint by numbers it's a learning opportunity yeah so i like that i i can't draw so <laughs> i'm kind of happy that i was able to do part of the body <laughs> that looks like a body the top part i i really don't know what happened but this is the first time I've tried to do something like this. So I think the um, the way your figure uh, evolving this like almost abstract expressive way, it reminds me of those uh, oh, wait, like certain, the, the illustrations of the Bible from what it was it was Goya like they are very dynamic expressive painting and the colors are kind of in that tone too. so i think it, there is a good energy there and thank you for following me in my demo thing and yes one thing i want to say uh -huh. when i 
I do step-by-step -step demos. So, you know, I show one thing and people do one thing, but I don't like, because it happened to me in the past, even when I was studying, I don't like those classes where you follow the demo of the teacher, but then you, and you get a nice thing in the end that you can put on your fridge or, you know, show on Instagram to your friend and be like, hey, I did that and, you know, get the dopamine uh, of the appreciation. But then you don't know how to do it on your own. And so, exactly. Like, when it exactly. Happens, that's, yeah, that's what I meant when I said it's not paint by numbers. Yes. And you're showing it step by step, but so that we understand what we're doing. Yeah. And so, and that's the important thing. Like, my wish for everybody that participated to this class is that you understood the principle because of why we did it this way. So you can try to do it again and, and practice, you know, so. I got a question for the, uh, for the shape on the top, you know, person that's on top. Do you yeah. think it's because I, yeah. I did the watercolor, I, I use water and watercolor pencil. Is it because I made the shape too big or? The thing or... is, I feel that the figure on top is not, wrong it's just not detailed but the overall composition to me it's actually like the proportions and everything it's actually quite balanced and you can't see the details so it is slightly abstracted but it is readable like oh okay there so if you want to make it more okay. understandable uh, you can try to put these small shadows with a little bit more contrast. Oh. But now the color is not dark enough. Bye, Judith. Have a lovely day. Um, so try to put a little bit more contrast. But if not, again, if this is one of your first tries in something like this, I feel, yes. I feel that it's a good result. Like the, the proportion is there. Like, there is dynamism and the colors are muted colors so like lovely muted colors so it, it's okay it's okay Damaris okay thank, thank you thank you much. have a lovely day and Silke unmute yourself dear bye Jojo ah Margot I see you you're raising your physical hand Okay, I see you, I remember you. So for, for the Berlin drawing room, it's a series of first times for me. So this is my first watercolor figure in drawing. And um, what I like about it is the, the proportions of the standing figure. And I've, but I feel that the lying figure is not very readable. And um, what, I've, what I struggled with is, um, I worked with a sketchbook and the watercolor paper is not very good. So I had pro problems with that. And uh, I used a very big brush. So mm -hmm. um, I had really problems to work on the details. Mm. So I would like to try it with a bigger sheet of paper. Yeah, I, I, I agree that this, like, if you are at least have an A4, like me, it, it's going to be easier. And, but uh, yeah. uh, for the figure above, uh, I think that one point of uh, sh of the shape that makes it slightly more understandable, and actually that I kind of I just realized I could have done it better too. But it's this point uh, here. There should be a dark corner, like this angle. Wait, let me do it with. Do I still have some watercolor? But yeah, like this angle here between the back where the back and the waist meets. I feel that that's the point that makes the shape a little bit more readable if you mm -hmm. don't have detail. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. And then we have uh, Margot, I know you're there. I finish up the people with the with the icon and then I get to you, okay? Okay. I know, but I know you're there. And Jacqueline, unmute yourself. 
Uh, yeah, I'll try to show my picture. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I had the problem problem that the second color was too dark. I guess. So um, I need to start like the third color was super hard to make it darker. Mm. So uh, I think that was my main problem. Um, but what I really liked is that you showed us to change the point of view that you should think in this geometric, geometric, I can't spell it, right, yeah. um, thinking, and that change, change, changes somehow your um, brain system. And that was what I learned. Thank you very much for that. And I'm also becoming an art teacher, so that really helps me to teach the children because they are the same that they try to um, make it perfect always and they're so forth. So now I can show it like in a different way. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks. And good luck with your teaching with the kids. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> I teach to, to kids too in the past, like I stopped some years ago, uh, but yeah, it, they, they give you a lot of they give a lot back when you teach art to them. So all the, the good luck for that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and Malena, let's go. Hey, well, uh, I don't know if you can see. Uh -huh. um, well, for me, uh, I'm actually, I'm really happy because I it's the first time I, I'm doing this and I was expecting less from me <laughs> so um but the um, kind of problems that i had um well first of all the proportions i i'm not good at uh, drawing figurative mm -hmm. uh, but i realized that you know next time i should i don't know the um, it was good to do it fa fast because I, I think when i'm i'm thinking uh, or i have time to think too much, I, it's worst. So I, I like you to, to just uh, follow uh, your, the times you were uh, giving to us and that made, made me just try to do it fast and without thinking too much. Um, but I realized it was harder for me uh, to, to realize the difference between the shadows. So sometimes it was uh, easier to me to follow your reference of your drawing, but I, I think it should be uh, better to try to do it uh, without that uh, reference uh, so I can uh, train more my, like the, the difference of the, of the yeah. shot. Um, something that I don't know how to do, but I, I had problems too, is that sometimes I, the, I was um, like mixing colors and then, um, it, it was empty, so I had to do it again. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> how to do like uh, exactly the same, but um, I, th I think it shows that there are some uh, shadows that are, like I end up having more shadows than I expected. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> With the color, my suggestion, because uh, mixing exactly the same color, it's a skill that takes a while to develop. Uh, so the easier solution, also given the fact that watercolor is not an expensive color, do a lot. Like, do so much mm -hmm. that you have leftovers. You literally saw how I mix color with the leftover from the time before. Mm -hmm. Because watercolor is, you can re, uh, like, even if it's dry, you can remix it again with water. So it's not really wasted if it dries up in the pan. So just do a lot because it's better to have leftover than get halfway and you have to figure out what to do because you have to remix it. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you so much, Malena. Well, thank you, it was really nice. I'm happy to hear that. And Rox. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Unmute. I can't hear you. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. So one thing that 
you liked, that it worked, and one thing you will do different next time or that you struggle with. I think you, can you hear me? I don't know. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, my English is not very well when to talk. Ah. I understand and write very well. Okay, you can write me then. Write me in, in the chat if you want. Oh, okay, okay. Good. Okay. And thank you for, for participating, Rox. The contrast is very good and your shadows are very strong. So good job. And oh, Kevin, you're leaving. Thank you so much for participating, Kevin. And have a lovely day. And then uh, we have, wait, I already talked to he. Ivda, one second, I go to Margo and then I come back to you. Uh, Margo. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know whether you see it. Uh, yes. I have a very bad light. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, this was the, being a very, very uh, what, the beginner. Uh, I have never done any technique or any watercolors. I, I found it very nice uh, the way we build or the, the way you conduct the class, first of all, and the way we build the, the image. And um, what I struggled with was, first of all, like Malena said, uh, making enough quantities of, of uh, wash. Uh, this is uh, very, uh, I think it's a skill uh, uh, will come, that will come with some more practice. Uh, so I was a bit short in, the, in washes. So this is why I have so many shades and so many, so many colors. Mm -hmm. But uh, the second thing I, I, I struggled with was identifying the shadows. Um, so, and maybe also because the, the picture I opened on my screen was uh, not sharp enough or with the reflections or the screen the mode, uh, the mm -hmm. lights were, uh, so I was not identifying, I was not seeing the shadows. I was more following what you were doing mm -hmm. uh, step by step. So. I don't know, I would really like to join next classes. My suggestion or maybe uh, what I would prefer personally is maybe that we have a picture uh, beforehand so I can at least print it. So then watching at the picture and identifying the, the shades, the contrast or the lines, it's, it's oh. maybe a bit different. Um, so this is, this is my, my observation, but I really like the class. I really like the the, the nice energy uh, mm, and you. seeing also the seeing also the others uh, doing uh, having a, a bit different approach uh, and a different result in the end. Yeah. The Margot usually when I teach my workshops, um, some I, I tend to to give the peak like during the workshops we use Dropbox to to share the references and people like have time to print them. Like there are a couple of students that also print them. Th those who still have a printer at home, which is now, you know, a luxury item. Uh, but yeah, so for these uh, free classes, uh, we don't usually, we don't really have a way uh, to do that uh, systematically, but maybe I can uh, talk with the management and maybe we send the image with the link in the newsletter. Maybe we can figure out a way like that. But thank you for pointing it out. It's a, it's a good thing. Like not everybody has a good screen situation to look at pictures. So yeah, but, uh, definitely you. it gives me, a, I think I, I will uh, make it again, uh, trying to follow it from a print and focus on, uh, on building the image the same way as you did, uh, starting from, uh, from from shadows and, mm -hmm. uh, and layering this, uh, so. Uh, but it's it's a very very nice and a very nice class, and I will definitely join the next ones. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Hivda, tell me. Yes, I have one more question. Um, yes. To ask if I want to create a more united look, if I can say it. So, so because I still have the lines here in the middle of a body. And uh, there are also white spaces that I haven't colored yet. Uh, should I just leave them as they are and uh, erase the lines? Or should I, would you recommend me to color the whole, whole body? 
Okay, so it, see, th this is similar to the question that uh, somebody else asked before. The thing with this technique is that what gives the dynamic feeling is that is not uh, polished. The moment we try to make it polished, it loses freshness. So what I suggest, do it again, like do another one. And in the other one, you can beforehand plan like, oh, okay, I don't like that lighter tone there. So I'm not gonna do it from the start because that's how it works with watercolor. You, watercolor is a very good technique to develop planning abilities when you're working because in watercolor you kind of have to plan everything beforehand and then you do it on paper because you can't really correct so write down maybe take notes of what you want to keep in mind for next time and then you change it but don't touch it anymore because it will lose it will it will look like it, it loses everything because the moment you you rework uh, it goes and that's, you know, it's a transparent technique that we need to make peace with that. We need to accept watercolor for what it is. Oh. And, oh, Rox. And thank you so much, Rox. Yes, I'm happy that my step-by-step -step, uh, work for you. Okay, people, so we are at the end of our class. What I usually like to do to wrap up the class is to ask, everybody to unmute themselves